Stay up on the latest this hurricane season. Please subscribe for future updates. Hey, good Wednesday afternoon, everybody. Meteorologist Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman here back on the Weather Nerds channel here with an update on what is Ernesto, which is moving away from Puerto Rico. And before we get into this, if you haven't subscribed yet already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you learn on future content. Give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the update in this report. As you can see here, still dealing with some feeder bands here across Puerto Rico. That'll be kind of wrapping up here for tonight. The area saw upwards of about 10 inches of rain across the island. Obviously, some mudslides and some cleaning up they have to do there, but is now moving away. As we look at what's going on here on the infrared imagery, as this image kind of uplates here for us, as you can see, we're starting to get a nice explosion of thunderstorms right around the core. So we have the formation of what's called a central dense overcast. And with that part of a hurricane, we're probably going to see rapid intensification and the pressures falling rapidly here for the overnight hours as the system continues to move off toward the north. It looked like a little bit of dry air here on the western part of the system earlier in the day, but this is really starting to fan out, looking very symmetrical, seeing a pretty good outflow here across all four quadrants here. Again, we got all that warm air coming in at the surface, going up to the center of the hurricane, and then evacuates out the top. That's why you get that spread out looking feeling, and we should probably get an eye here forming here uh, through the overnight hours for tonight. So tomorrow morning when I do my update, I do suspect we'll have a nice eye there in the center of Ernesto in the morning. So here is the official track, the official plot is of the 5 o'clock advisory. You see they're at 21.7 north and 68.3 west, continuing to move to the northwest at 16, top winds at 75. And again, that will it rapidly intensify for tonight. In fact, by the time we get toward Friday afternoon, we're expecting it to reach major hurricane status. If it doesn't reach that before then, I do suspect it's possible it could be before then, maybe even as soon as tomorrow. And then we do have the hurricane watches up for the island Bermuda. Boy, in this track, makes all the difference in the world. If it tracks further away from the island, it doesn't get as bad. If it's right on it, they have not had a hurricane go right over Bermuda in some time. I'd have to go back and look at the history on this, but it's been quite a while since Bermuda's actually seen a direct hit from a hurricane. I mean, I'm talking about the eye going straight over uh, the island. But then it's going to race off here across the northern Atlantic, and as it does so, it will begin to weaken uh, as it gets picked up by another trough that'll be exiting off the eastern seaboard. So a little bit of wobbling here as it goes up here toward the north again. Got that deviation of the track of a, of a couple hundred miles here the further up you get. So again, that makes all the difference in the world when you're talking about a tiny speck out in the island known as the island of Bermuda here if it's going to get a direct hit or not. But eventually it's going to make that big turn off toward the east as it uh, gets picked up by the westerlies there. All right, so here's what we got going on here. Again, the, the hurricane strength here getting up to close to Cat 3 status uh, briefly. Then kind of a hold its own for a little while and then as it moves into cooler waters as well as becoming a, a what's known as extra tropical here long range it'll begin to lose that those tropical characteristics and the winds will begin to diminish all right we can take a look at one of these hurricane models here this is the hafs as you see it moving up here toward the north uh it looks like the pressure falls down as low as about uh, 949 millibars and then starts to increase to about 967 as they're approaching the canadian maritimes there now, we'll say this, anybody up and down the eastern seaboard from New Jersey down toward Florida, if you're going to the beaches this weekend, just watch out for increased wave activity and surf activity along the beaches that could uh, provide some additional rip currents possible there. So just watch out for that up and down the eastern seaboard. We're not getting a direct hit from a hurricane, but its presence will definitely be felt up and down the eastern seaboard. So please use caution. If you're going to a location, just watch those warning flags out there. Be safe, okay? All right, let's take a look at the European model. This is the afternoon model here. What you're looking at here is the main sea surface, uh, kind of the, the pressure anomalies. It's kind of how we track the, the highs and lows here. So uh, let me go ahead and track you through this again. So here is our system right here. We've got this weakness here that has been, what's been pulling it to the north. We've got the Azores highs, also sometimes known as the Bermuda high when it's over in the proper position in the, uh, into the uh, Western Atlantic, but it's steering around the periphery of that high as it's beginning to be pulled up toward the north. So what's going to happen is that a current trough is going to be pulling away as this continues to move up to north. It'll be moving pretty steadily here for a little while as we go into your Friday. Now what we're looking at on Friday, as you look at Friday here, we've got this another low here back over the Great Lakes. This is what's going to pick this system up and kind of, again, uh, kind of kick it, give it a nice little kick across the northern Atlantic as we go into this upcoming weekend. So again, watch that timestamp in the upper right-hand corner. Again, as it continues to move forward here, again, you see the interaction between the areas of low pressure here 
as we go into the day on Sunday. Yeah, you're seeing that clearly right through here. And what's going to happen, this is going to start to kick on out uh, very quickly uh, as we go ahead and see this uh, steer on off. So here we go, go forward and boom, it's going to accelerate on out. So the, some of the Canadian provinces will get hit with some pretty rough sea conditions as this kicks on out. And then it looks like as we look at the rest of this, taking it all the way out to the end of the 10 days, we've got a couple areas we're going to have to watch here. You see one out here in the middle of the Atlantic here. Uh, showing some blue in here and then another one back here. So we could be looking at a couple of tropical waves uh, that will need to be monitored to see if they will become uh, potential tropical depressions here in the future as we go past the 24th of August. So uh, things will begin to start to get real busy out in the Atlantic as we're going to see the conditions out there also slowly begin to change. The main reason for this is going to be the fact that we're not ex we're expecting the Saharan dust to greatly diminish here uh, over time. As I got this looping here on the 12Z, you kind of see here going on out through the 19th that the amount of Saharan dust out there is on the downside and that will continue to decrease through the end of the month. So conditions out there for tropical wave development uh, will be looking much better uh, as we go in toward the end of the month and going into early September. So things will begin to improve. In fact, the Global Hazard Outlook, which was updated yesterday, was illustrating this as the fact that we're showing uh, a 40% chance of tropical depression development here, say between August 21st and 27th, and then again out here in the middle of the Atlantic going towards September 3rd, showing about a 60% chance for development. So it looks like where things will begin to heat up uh, very quickly as, again, we're heading toward the peak of that hurricane season, which is on September the 10th. We get two-thirds of our activity between August 20th and October 10th. So things are going to get quite busy out in the Atlantic and yours truly is going to keep a very watchful eye on, the, on these systems uh, to see what kind of impact, if any, it'll have along the eastern portion of the United States and of course the Gulf of Mexico. So things are going to get busy and if you'd like to stay up on the latest on this hurricane season, I invite you to be part of the Weather Nerds family. Always a welcome to have a, another viewer here on the channel. So please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, give me a thumbs up. You do those things, it does help with YouTube algorithm, kind of allows things to get out to a bigger audience there. And if you got a comment or any kind of feedback, I truly do appreciate that as well. All right, that's your late afternoon update on Ernesto. I'll have another update for you come tomorrow morning. Until then, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.